When I was growing up, the neighbors had a German shepherd dog named Butch. Now, Butch was not only the protector of their household, he was the protector of the neighborhood. I mean, a German shepherd with a dog named Butch. But if there was a thunderstorm, then things changed for Butch. He became a huge wimp. He would be huffing and puffing and his heart would be racing and he was afraid. You know, and he would, if, if Butch could, could say something out loud, he would say that, where are you, God? You know, amidst this storm. Now, it's interesting, you know, in our first reading from the first book of Kings, you know, God is not present in the wind. You know, like the the wind get that can split rocks. He's not present in the earthquake. He's not present in the fire, but he's present in the silence. Really, what what God is teaching uh, Elijah in this moment is Elijah is turning into a little bit of a militant as a prophet. You know, at this point in time, the queen is after him. It's gonna, you know, is is after his life because you know Elijah is challenging the people because they their idolatry and he's being a little bit strict and rigid about it. And God is showing Elijah that he needs to be gentle, he needs to be humble. Because And this is the way that our God operates. In our second reading, the letter to the Romans, you know, Paul has a huge storm within his heart. You know, he is wounded that others have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And, and, you know, he would be even willing to give up his knowledge of this great gift so that others would come to believe and to know, so that could bring peace to his heart. You know, in a gospel reading, you know, Jesus has just sent the disciples away. Now, what he's done prior is he's fed the multitudes. Now, he sends the disciples away because the people want to make him king. I mean, he's just fed them. And they're like, wow, I want to have this guy as my king. He'll be able to provide for me. So Jesus sends the disciples away so they don't get caught up in this chaos, in this storm. But then they enter into their own storm of life. Now, Jesus, what does he do? He goes to the mountain to pray. Now, important it is, you know, through the busyness of life that we take time to go to the mountain to pray or go to Mount St. Francis to pray and, and reflect and have some quiet time. But as Jesus walks upon the water, the disciples are afraid. They're probably more afraid of him than of the storm. You know, being fishermen, they would have been used to these kinds of storms. But Jesus invites them to not be afraid. Now, once again, you know, Peter kind of, we have to chuckle at Peter's response. You know, if it's you, Lord, command me to come out onto the water. You know, and what if the ghost or the so-called ghost was like, yeah, come out on the water. I'm not Jesus. Ha <laughs> ha. But, you know, Peter goes up and really reflects his denial. Peter has the same pattern of of action when he denies Jesus. Because, uh, you know, at one point he's ready to die with Jesus or for Jesus. And then he sinks into denial. Here he's able to go out and he actually walks on water, does better than most of us. And yet he caves in at a certain point and begins to sink. And yet he says this great line, Lord, save me. In other words, we rely on on Jesus to save us and he saves us through his death and resurrection he's come to bring salvation he's come to bring well-being to all of us to to calm the storms within our hearts and so as we gather around the table Lord once again we have nothing to fear with our God who becomes present to us in bread and wine so we can give thanks and we can go out and we can calm the butches of our society and we can bring peace to the people that we meet.